dragonfly, they land on your shoulder. It's good luck. But wait a minute. Tyler, this isn't this, this isn't our time to talk about dragonflies, is it? No, wait a minute. Let me get him down nice and carefully. We are here to talk about bees, all kinds of bees. But not only are we going to talk about bees, but we have a very special guest. But wait, not yet. We're not going to do the special guest yet. But tonight we're going to go and we're going to kind of learn all about uh, getting working with beeswax, we're going to make beeswax candles, and we're going to, and it's kind of funny because it's actual beeswax. And some of you have received your, your uh, kit in the mail, but it's actual beeswax. So if you touch it, you can feel the texture of it. It's just a thin sheet that we're going to roll into a beeswax candle, but more of that later. So we have a special guest with us uh, this evening, and she is just incredible. She joined us this, uh, when we had our summer reading program. She was part of that, and I was just thrilled to pieces when um, Abigail said, oh, I snuck in her name, when Abigail said that she would be more than happy to come and join us for our Makerspace Monday night event. But with all things, it is always fun to have a little learning time before we begin. How many of you are ready to exercise? You right? You think it's exercise class? Go ahead, flap your arms up and down. I know some of you out there are, are, are exercise people. So flap your arms up and down. Now, if you can do that 200, oh, see, I'm already getting tired. I must be out of shape. But did you know that a bee can flap his wings 200 times per second? Go ahead, try it. All right, enough of that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna first of all introduce, talk to you about a few bee facts before we begin. First of all, did you know that a bee, bzzz, a bee has, drum roll please, five eyes. Better to see you with. And did you know he has six legs? Better to run with. Did you know that? Did you know that? And then on top of all of that, now, will you have your supper tonight, or maybe you're a late night eater, but one out of every three bites that you eat, you can thank your most beautiful buzzing beauty, bees. And what's one more? I got to give you one more tidbit. Did you know, on average, on a very, very good day, that a bee can fly and go and visit 50 to 100 flowers a day? I know, amazing, right? Well, enough of this learning stuff. We're not in school. We're here to have some fun and get our fingers busy. So with further ado, I would love to introduce you to our 2020 Iowa Honey Queen, Abigail Kelly. Abigail Kelly, welcome. And Abigail is going to uh, in, teach us all about how to make beeswax candles and lip Balm beeswax. All right, come on in. I love it's just so nice to have you, Abigail. Welcome. Okay, you can't hear me. I just realized you couldn't hear me. Hi, <laughs> everyone. How are you? Hi, Abigail. Um, I hope everyone's doing good and staying safe today. Like um, she said, we're going to be talking about beeswax, and beeswax is actually one of my very favorite things. Um, so what is beeswax? Because it's helpful to know what it is before we have to do anything with it, right? So beeswax is something that honeybees make. Um, honeybees will eat honey and then their bodies will digest that honey and change it into beeswax and then they'll secrete it which means that they um, it comes out of their body through glands and the glands are like special um, parts of their body that help make beeswax. If they didn't have the glands, they couldn't make beeswax. And so they'll secrete the beeswax and then they'll use their mouths to shape it and um, work with it to create whatever they need. So if you have your beeswax sheet handy, you can feel it and you can feel the hexagon pattern on it. So a hexagon has a total of six sides and it is the best shape for honeybees to use in their hive. And so if you feel it, you can feel kind of what a honeybee hive feels like. Um, and so they'll also use beeswax to cover their cells. So what you're feeling is like the cells in the hive. 
And once those cells are full of honey or pollen or baby bees, they'll cover them to keep them safe and clean. So it's like your lid to a jar sometimes um, for beeswax. So beeswax doesn't come to beekeepers like the sheet you have. Um, it comes to beekeepers in kind of a sticky way. When we remove beeswax, it's either over honey, and honey is of course super sticky. Um, so it's then mixed as beeswax and honey, and we have to separate it. So we'll rinse the beeswax with water, and that removes all the honey. And then we'll clean it by heating it up and putting it through cloth like a t-shirt. So um, that takes all the bad stuff out of beeswax, like um, pollen or dirt or bee body parts that does sometimes get in beeswax. And that gives us super clean beeswax that we can use to make candles or to make um, lip balm and stuff like that. I have a really big chunk of beeswax in front of me that came out of my crock pot. Um, it's all one color except that there is some dirt in it. And so I can't use this beeswax yet, it's too dirty. You know how sometimes when you walk outside, if you walk outside barefoot, you can feel all sorts of dirt on the bottom of your feet? That's kind of what's in this beeswax, all that dirt that we wanna get out before we can use it. So this one needs to be cleaned one more time, which I'll do eventually down the line. Um, so let's start by making our candle. So you need your sheet of beeswax that you felt to feel that pattern. And then you need your wick. And your wick kind of feels like rope. It's um, about as long as the short side of your beeswax sheet. And it's like a little rope. The wick is the part of your candle that holds the flame so that the beeswax will melt. Um, so it's very important. It's just as important to your candle as the beeswax. So what you want to do is you want to take your wick and you want to lay it on the short side of your candle. So you have a long side and you have a short side and you want to lay your wick so it um, goes across the short side and so that it sticks out only one end. So you want to be sure to line it up well. Once it's lined up, you're going to take a little bit of your um, wax on the very edge of your sheet and pinch it tight over your wick. So you're just going to press the wax over your wick. And this will keep your wick in place so that when you roll it, your wick doesn't go all funky on you. And it's okay to make it look, you know, it won't look pretty. It will feel kind of haphazard, but that's okay if it's messy because we'll make it look good and we'll make it very smooth as we roll it. So once it's pinched, you're gonna just roll it up tight. So you're gonna fold the wick that's been pinched over the sheet of wax over and over until you can kind of roll it. So it takes a little effort. You don't wanna pinch or press down because then you will lose your imprint on your wax sheet, that hexagon pattern. And you just keep rolling it up all the way till you get to the end. All right, I can only see uh, Denise, so I can tell she's not done. So some of you maybe still need time, so I'll wait a little longer. All right, once your candle is all the way rolled up, you might feel that it's really, it's round, except for one part where you have some of it sticking out. And you'll just wanna press that little bit into the candle. So just enough so that it creates a pretty smooth circle all the way around. And then once that's done, you have your candle and you can feel and see how flat your bottom is and how flat your top is to see how good you did. Um, when you burn it, you will obviously need an adult's help. Um, and you'll want to burn it on like a piece of tin foil or a candlestick, something that you don't mind if it gets dirty because beeswax is really hard to clean. And then you'll just burn it um, and it should last you quite some time. So when you burn it, you should try to feel the warmth it gives off without getting too close to the candle, the flame. You should smell 
and see if it smells like honey or if it smells like beeswax, because you can smell your beeswax right now if you want. And you can smell to see if it doesn't have any scent at all. You can see what it smells like. Um, I think it has a, its own unique flavor scent thing, um, but a lot of people think it smells a lot like honey. So you'll have to see what you think. So that's a beeswax candle. It's really quick and fun. Um, so beeswax candles is one use for beeswax. Um, we do use special beeswax for candles. It's called burr comb. And it's just comb that's maybe older and darker colored. And that's been in a, the hive for a long time. When we talk about making lip balm or hand creams or anything that goes on your skin, we use something called honey cappings. And the honey cappings is the beeswax that goes on top of the honey cells to protect them and keep them clean. Um, just imagine when you go into your house, are your shoes dirty? They probably are. If you wear your shoes on a really clean carpet, that's gonna get your carpet dirty, right? And so that's kind of how the bees think too. They know that their feet are dirty, and then if they walk over open honey cells with no lids on it, they'll get that honey dirty. And I'm sure you're like me and you don't want your food to be dirty, and neither do bees. So they cover it with beeswax. And then the beekeeper will take the beeswax um, out of the hive when they take the honey out. So they'll take all the honey out and they'll cut off the beeswax and they'll keep it and clean it. And then that's the beeswax they'll use for skincare products like lip balm. So I'm going to make lip balm now. I have a glass container. Um, I recommend using glass because you have to heat it. So glass is just safest and easiest. And in my container, I have one tablespoon of beeswax. If you're gonna follow along or when you make this later, you should feel the beeswax and see if it felt different from your candle beeswax. It probably will because your candle beeswax had a hexagon print and your lip balm beeswax is just really small pieces. And so that's gonna feel different. It might feel smooth or it might feel rough or it might feel um, like chunky and you can feel the different sizes. I just took beeswax and broke it up with um, a, like a chicken pounder hammer thing for the kitchen. Um, beeswax is really hard. You can't really cut it. So you have to like smack it over and over again. It's really hard. So I have that in my glass container and I'm going to add one tablespoon of shea butter. And shea butter is the thick oil that you have. Um, shea butter is really good for your skin. It moisturizes it so it helps your skin feel soft. And it helps to keep your skin healthy, which of course is important. So that's your oily thick one. It's probably called shea butter because it kind of has the consistency of butter. And then there's also one tablespoon of sweet almond oil. And that's the oily oily, it's a liquid. That one's really oily. And that's again a good moisturizer. It keeps your skin soft and healthy. And then you put all that in your, jar or your container and you melt it. My sister Miriam is going to melt it in the microwave. Um, sometimes when I make this I make it on the stove. So I'll have a pot and I'll have the pot about half full of water and then I'll put all my ingredients in the glass jar and put it in the water and then I'll melt it on the stove. If you do that you have to be very careful not to get any of the beeswax on your stove because beeswax might light on fire. Um, and you have to be careful to watch it. Um, but that's my preferred method method because I think it's a little easier to, just easier to watch than in the microwave. Sometimes it's hard to hear and see how things are going in your microwave. And the next thing you know, your stuff is overcooked or something, but it's faster in the microwave, which is why we're doing it in the microwave tonight. So another tip is depending on what your flavoring is, you might want to hold it. Yes. I have a quick question. Yes. So if you're to use a microwave and your microwave was just say average size, how long would you cook that for? And is there certain types of um, smells that you should look, you know, should be sensing or smelling when you're cooking in the microwave? How long should they cook it in the microwave? Um, it depends. Yeah. Miriam has asked me how long to, uh, until I'll melt. 
Um, it depends. You want to wait till all milks. Sometimes the beeswax takes a while. So it could be, you know, two minutes or it could be five, seven minutes. So it depends. What you want to do is you want to stir it. Here's your spoon, Miriam. Thank you. With this uh, disposable spoon specifically because it's hard to clean beeswax things. Um, and if it's smooth and you don't feel any lumps or chunks, then it's probably good. Um, if it's not smooth and you feel something that is solid in it, then it's not done. So it's more about feeling it than smelling necessarily. So um, what I say with the flavoring is your flavoring, you typically want to hold in your hand because it gets it warm. And then your flavoring is close to as warm as your beeswax oil mixture. And that helps it um, mix together easier. If you've ever heard the phrase, oil and water don't like to mix, um, it's kind of similar for your flavoring depending on what you use. Today I'm using an oil one, so it should be fine. But if it's not an oil-based one, sometimes it likes to separate. And then all your flavoring is on the bottom and all your other stuff is on the top. So most of your lip balms don't have any flavoring. Are there any questions at all? I don't know. Like there's a chat, so if you have a question, you can ask someone to put in the chat, or if you have more. I have a question about heating. Uh, Abigail, yeah. um, so if you were to start off, would you start off on, the, I'm just seeing the microwave and vision, you know, with my son in there trying to do this and not, <laughs> so what do you think, one, would you start with just one minute first on the microwave or two minutes? What do you think? I'd start with a minute. And a then minute? do a minute, a minute until it starts to get done, and then you can do like 30 seconds okay. until it's done. Sounds good. And I like it. Uh, I was thinking about too uh, if you were to do, would it be all right to do a, with the glass container and then with kind of that pour section? So when you do pour it into those, the smaller size plastic holders with the lid that does go on it for the lip balm holder. If you have like a, I'm trying to des describe what it is, so it would pour into it a lot easier. I almost think using a microwave would be easier to use for a heating up device. It's pretty and it has easy. like that pour in, because most of your measuring glass containers have that piece where you can pour it in, you know, where it narrows it. I'm trying to think what it is. Yeah, it's but. like, a, it's not a funnel, but you could use a funnel. Like okay. I use a funnel for, if you have a lip balm tube, so the balm tube is what typically your chapstick and stuff comes in. And it's really thin up top because it's made to go right on your lips. If I use that, I like to use it in funnel because it's hard to get it in. Um, but the bigger, they're short and round and have a really big opening. They're not too hard to pour in. I do recommend having a container with a spout. I think that's what it's called. Spout. That is the magic word I was trying to find, spout, yes. A spout would be nice. <laughs> so mine is a liquid, a liquid measuring cup, like for baking or cooking, but I use it just for beeswax, which is important because remember beeswax is really hard to clean. So if we can dedicate everything to it, you don't have to worry as much because you don't want this. This stuff would not taste very good in food. Okay, so mine is all melted. So it's all the liquid and I can feel there's no chunks. I'm gonna add some of my flavoring. Um, the recipe, I can't remember if it calls for one eighth or one quarter of a teaspoon, but you want to choose based on how much flavoring you like. So I'm using peppermint, which is really strong. So I'm using very little, and I can already smell the very strong um, lip balm. If you're using something like a strawberry or a raspberry, those are a little softer flavors. So you'll want to use a little more than if you were to use peppermint. And that's where it's kind of fun because you can put a little in and if you want more, you can add more. Um, and you can kind of play around. You can mix flavors like, um, oh, what is it? There's one where it's like orange and something else, but I can't remember what it is, but sounds really good. Or you could do like cinnamon and apple. There's apple flavoring. There's a lot of flavorings that you might think are a little weird, but there's a lot out there. So it could be fun to try around with different scents. So now I'm going to pour it in my containers and I'm going very slow because otherwise I will overfill my containers and it will spill outside of them. 
Not that I'm speaking from experience, which I totally am. I spill all the time. And it's, you want to use all of it as you can in the containers. So I'm filling both the normal lip balm tubes that you use right on your lips. And then the other ones are called cosmetic jars. And they're the shorter, rounder ones. Um, it just depends on what you like. A lot of people like the lip balm ones more, but co the cosmetic jars are easier to pour because they have a bigger opening. This would probably make great gift ideas too. Yes, these are really great gifts. Every Almost everyone likes chapstick or lip balm, I guess. So it makes really good gifts. Um, especially if you pair it with honey. Like, you could get a jar of honey and do lip balm with that. I like to do that. Once it's poured in the jars, um, it takes about three minutes to cool to the point where you can wipe down the outside and get all the extra lip balm off so that the outside's not oily. And then you can put the cap on and then let it sit for a couple hours so it solidifies. Um, I'm sure we're all familiar with how lip balm feels. It's very soft and easy to put on. If you move it too much, it becomes chunky. And it's kind of like, I guess I'm just thinking dirt, but if you put dirt in butter, like that would be kind of the texture. If you can imagine that it's sort of smooth, but it has like granules in it. So it's not, it's not pleasant. So definitely let it sit. I like to let it sit overnight because then I know it's ready for sure. So this recipe also makes about, it, it depends a lot. It sometimes makes me six containers and it sometimes makes me like nine. So it depends on a lot of things, probably partially how much you spill, but it makes a pretty good amount. I have a question, Abigail. Yes. How, I mean, how long do you think this will last? If we have six tubes that we're making, how long do you think it'll last? I mean, once, if you're so, gonna wait till Christmas and give it as a Christmas gift. Right. So it lasts a really long time. Um, the one thing to be careful about is um, the flavoring. So I don't know if you've ever done this, but if you put candy, in a cabinet and then you put fruit flavored gum in a cabinet that fruit gum that flavoring goes into the candy so you probably don't want to start by anything with a really strong flavor because you don't want that to happen but it should last you know a couple months six months i mean it's beeswax is a very stable um ingredient so it keeps your oils and stuff stable for a long time and it doesn't let them go bad so it lasts for a while. Um, I have a tube of lip balm from 2017 that is still good and that I haven't run out of yet. What was your flavor you used for that? I didn't actually use a flavor. It was something um, from an event. Oh, okay. So I didn't have a flavor, but I don't think a flavor would affect that at all. So while we're on the flavor subject, uh, everyone was sent for their activity kit uh, the flavor strawberry. And I had to say, when I was trying to put everything together to get everything sent out, I used it in my office. It smelled like a fresh strawberry grove all afternoon long. In fact, people would stop by, oh, your office smells so good. It's very fragrant. And I know some of you at home that have opened up your jar and are getting a big uh, a scent of it. It's so fresh and just so delicious smelling. Strawberry is a favorite for sure. I, um, me and my sisters make this and we'll sell it at farmer's markets. So if you do a farmer market at all, that would be a good thing to add to it. Um, but people really, really like strawberry and then they like peppermint around Christmas. So those are what I like found are the most popular, but maybe you like a different scent and you want to make that. Like some people love banana flavored lip balm, which it's actually pretty good. We've made banana. Black cherry is a favorite. You could do lavender essential oil as long as it's food grade. Um, you could do no flavoring if you want, although then it kind of tastes like shea butter, so I don't necessarily recommend that, but you could try it and see what it tastes like. 
um, without any flavoring. So just, you could experiment a little bit, which is fun. And the, so the activity kits that, I, that was mailed out, I just want to let you know that extra portions were added. So you will need to measure it uh, when you go to make your own creation in your kitchen. So you want to measure it. So extra portions were added. Do we have any questions? I don't think we have any questions. I have a question for you. Okay. Abigail, what is your sister's favorite scent? Your little helper, your little, your bee helper, what is her favorite uh, lip balm scent? Does she leave the scene? Yeah, she's thinking. <laughs> oh, she's going, hmm. She's going to come over and tell you. This is Miriam, my Hi. sister. Hi, Miriam. I would, I would say my favorite is either black cherry, pineapple, or strawberry. I'm pretty sure we made strawberry ones. Oh, we made that one. I'm, I'm going to stand over here and let her come over. <laughs> yeah. So, black cherry, pineapple, and strawberry. Not together, though. No. <laughs> Not together? That might be kind of an interesting... I can remember one time I was making candles and I, I decided that I love all these flavors or all these different scents and I thought, let's just put it all in. You're right. No, just keep it simple, right? And you did mention something about the flavoring. What was important, the food grade you said, if he's, uh, those that want to branch out and maybe uh, do this activity separately without the different uh, products sent to them? So if they were to buy more and replenish their supply, you said food grade flavoring, is that right? Yes, so it needs to be food grade because you're putting it on your skin. So um, the type you have, I believe, is candy flavoring. So that's food grade, it's typically for candy, but you know, it can be used for lip balm. That's what I use for a lot of my flavors. Um, you can use essential oils as long as they're food grade. Okay. Um, you could use like, you can buy flavoring that's not necessarily candy flavoring, but it's food grades so like vanilla extract, lemon extract, that type of thing. The one thing about lemon is, I tried this once. Lemon is it's a good flavor. I really like it, but it's really bad if you have dry lips because think of what happens if you get a paper cut and you put like lemon in it or orange juice or something acidic, like it hurts. So if your lips are really chapped and dry, that can really sting. So, but it is a nice flavor when your skin isn't like that. Wow, that is great advice. And I just got to, I have to say, everyone, it, wherever you are right now, you have to give her a huge warm applause for just being here tonight. And thank you so much. And real fast, though, you have bees of your own, right? Aren't you a little beehive keeper? Is that what you call that? Yeah, I'm a beekeeper. Yeah, so I have... <laughs> Or I guess me and my family have 13 beehives. And a beehive is about, if you are about five feet or taller, a beehive goes up to about um, between your knee and your hip. So that's about how tall they are typically, except in the summer when we add lots of honey supers so we can get lots of honey. And in one beehive, there can be between 40,000 and 80,000 bees. It's a lot of bees, that's but it's a lot of fun to go check on them and make sure they're happy and healthy. Well, you do a great job and they can't tell you how grateful we are for what you do and how important bees are. Uh, you wanna stick around for our, uh, first though, first, before we end, this coming Saturday at 10 a.m., we are going to do a STEM in Stories and you are welcome to come back. It's gonna be very casual. Abigail's gonna do story time with us as well. So she's gonna be back back in the playground. Uh, so I just wanted to throw that out and then next month we're also gonna be doing some really cool things with recycling and doing tote bags and all of that. So we've got lots of fun stuff planned at the playground. So in closing, and everyone applauded, thank you so much for, for being here tonight. We look forward to seeing you on Saturday. We're gonna end with a song. Join in and sing if you want to, Abigail. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to the playground, the maker 
space.